We need to go into the Capitol! Into the Capitol! What? This is fine. The Capitol Police never stopped Jacob Chansley. They helped him. They acted as his tour guides. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Benny. In April of 2022, Elon Musk tweeted this prophetic meme. It's a meme showing how people who were kind of center left in 2008, that's the year that Barack Obama won the presidency, uh, have effectively been abandoned by leftists who have sprinted so hard to the left that now they find themselves on the right and the center has now moved. And this is, of course, what's happening every single day. You see it. The more radical, the more tyrannical, the more extremist the left gets, the more the people in the middle who would generally be Obama voters, right, who like are were kind of OK voting for Biden are now like waking up. They're like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't ask for this. And one of those people is Joe Rogan. And this is a fascinating to me because not only is Joe Rogan the most listened to man on the planet and there is. No second place there. I mean, the, Joe Rogan is the most listened to guy on the planet. His podcast, each episode gets 12, 14 million downloads. Joe Rogan, most influential media voice on the planet, saying that January 6th was a federal setup. And we'll get to those comments in just a second. But what is happening now is the left has, of course, turned on Joe Rogan. They turned on Joe Rogan for having a free conversation uh, about the virus of unspecified origin. And now they've turned on Joe Rogan for questioning how the federal government is active in instigating violence inside of protests or riots in order to assume power and control. Ray Epps is now attacking Joe Rogan for this. If Rogan is truly interested in focusing on who instigated January 6th, Maybe he should look in the mirror. What? Ray Epps' attorney is saying that Joe Rogan caused January 6th. It was Joe Rogan the whole time, says Tim Pool. You can't get better than this. You cannot get better than this. Joe Rogan, earlier in the week, suggested that the January 6th Capitol riot was a setup to bring down Donald Trump, set up by federal agents. And they used Ray Epps here in the cover image. This is the New York Post. This tweet, of course, went viral. This must have put a B in the bonnet of Ray Epps's lawyer, who is now attacking Joe Rogan, saying Ray Epps's attorney fires back at Joe Rogan over January 6th false flag absurdity and stating effectively that Joe Rogan caused January 6th. Got it? Oh, man. Oh, I love it. You just love it. You just absolutely love it. This is, exa this is exactly Joe Rogan right here. That guy. Exactly Joe Rogan right there. Elon Musk is saying this is him and that the left has just utterly abandoned him. Common sense people. Uh, during a broadcast of the Joe Rogan experiment last week, he was conspiracy theory peddling. But the now lawyered up Ray Epps is attacking Joe Rogan. I just love it. In a statement to the Daily Beast on Tuesday morning, Epps attorney Michael Teeter blasted Rogan. Joe Rogan's recent comments show the staying power of the consequences of Tucker Carlson's lies about Ray Epps. Ray Epps is now suing Fox News. For years, Fox targeted Ray Epps, the falsehood about him, and Fox viewers used the lies as a basis uh, to harass and threaten Ray. He added the absurdity of the conspiracy theory, theory does not stand in the way of it being spread and weaponized to harm Ray if Mr. Rogan is truly interested in focusing on the who instigated the Capitol uh, riots. He should be looking in the mirror more than he does focusing on a wedding venue owner from Arizona. So, again, this is uh, Ray, Epps's Ray Epps' attorney making this all about all about Ray Epps. And uh, I guess what, what is this like uh, th th saying that they may maybe they're going to go after Joe Rogan next. Ooh, baby, be my guest, please make my day. So Ray Epps is suing Fox News um, in a lawsuit that I have, like, I cannot imagine that this lawsuit will be allowed to go forward by a judge, but I suppose we'll see. Crazier things have happened. Now they're firing off. This is like a fire. This is like a preemptive firing off of a threat to Joe Rogan for making these comments on his, the most listened to show in the world 
about January 6th. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, this meme is utterly prescient and prophetic. Please, please attack Joe Rogan more. Make my day. Here's what Joe had to say about January 6th and the federal involvement in it. Uh, Further I think the January 6th thing is pretty bad. Well, the January 6th thing is bad, but also the intelligence agencies were involved in provoking people to go into the Capitol building. That's a fact. Do you, so wait a minute. You're, you're saying that that guy, what's his name? Ray Epps. Yeah, you really think that he I don't was, know. I don't know, but I do know that every other- I think that's other, pretty apparent. I think he's going to sue Fox. I think every other- person who was involved in January 6 who was involved in coordinating uh, a break-in into the Capitol and in instigating people breaking they all were all arrested this guy wasn't not only that they were defending him in the New York Times the Washington Post all those different things because saying that Fox News is unjustly accused him of instigating well he clearly instigated he yeah, did no, it on camera I don't know if he was a Fed. I know a lot of people think he was a Fed. The people that were there were calling him a Fed. What I do know is when they asked the FBI, the FBI said, we can't tell you whether or not there were people that were there that were doing that. Now, there's been reports that there was hundreds of agents that were there that were doing that. I don't know if that's true either. But I do know that they do use agent provocateurs to disrupt peace, peaceful protests. It's a, a common tactic. What they do is say if there's a um, – like the World Trade Organization is a great example. And that was in, I think, the 90s in Seattle. And so what they did was they were protesting the World Trade Organization. They were doing it peacefully. It was a big problem. So what they did is they sent in, allegedly, Asian provocateurs. They started smashing buildings and yeah. lighting things on fire. Now it's not a peaceful protest. Now they can bring in the police. Now they can start arresting people. And then they created a no-protest zone where literally if you had a pin on your jacket that was the WTO with a red line through it, they would not let you cross. You could not cross with a pin that was against the WTO and, and go to work. It was a no protest zone. So they, they, they silenced protest, which is right. a part of our freedom of speech. So this is a tactic that some government agencies uh, use okay, to stop okay, but, but peaceful wait a minute. protests. All right, so what you're saying is on January 6th that uh, this event that obviously Trump organized, forget about the Giuliani stuff and the... Uh, you know whether they thought that it was he definitely stolen. encouraged people to protest yes but all right so you're saying that like the the fbi and nancy pelosi and and i'm, I'm not saying to, nancy pelosi no, no but like you're saying that like they're like you know we'll make this uh instead of uh an awkward protest we'll encourage it so that it'll be it'll backfire on Trump rather than being this rising of people that uh, believe that there was election corruption. I think it's certainly I possible. I think that would be hard. You think it's possible? I think it's possible. You don't think it's, wait a minute, you think it's hard to do? I think that, uh, you know, that the FBI or the CIA saying, hey, you know, Trump lost this, because here's what you're kind of implying. Trump lost the election. He is such a, a an amazing communicator, and he's convinced this loyal base that there was election interference. We don't want them to protest. How we can end this is if we encourage people to go beyond protesting to uh, essentially go into the Capitol and take a shit in the hallway. I mean, I'm exaggerating right. a little bit. Yeah. But, like, I don't see why that would be of use. Like, I'm more suspicious why Trump didn't call for backup when, you know, or, you know, for uh, the for the Capitol Police. You know what I mean? It's like there was and that like Michael Flynn's brother was, you know, what I mean, like there's there's way more conspiracy stuff against. Uh, against Trump and you know then I think the the slim likelihood that people were like oh Trump's a problem let's just get these people that are loyal to Trump to run into the Capitol so that we can arrest 300 people does that make sense no 
No, it doesn't no. make sense. No, I think it's a standard tactic, especially when someone is the enemy of the intelligence agencies. With Trump, that's absolutely the case. Trump set himself up against the intelligence agencies. He did it openly, and he did it brazenly. And a, a lot of people think it's very dangerous. Like, the intelligence agencies are very important. You know, you want to find out what's going on in other countries. You want to find out what the threats to America are. You want to find out what terrorist activities are going to be taking place and stop them before. And, you know, JFK you, had his problem with the intelligence yeah, agencies. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, look, it's unchecked power, right? It's That's the deep state. It's unchecked power. And I think Trump was very open about his disdain for the intelligence agencies. He created enemies in the intelligence agencies. It's standard for intelligence agencies in this country to encourage agent provocateurs or to employ agent provocateurs. And so you're saying when he was in Helsinki and he was saying, I believe Putin more than my intelligence community, that was something the intelligence community was like, we're going to get him. Well, I think they were going to get him in any way that they could because he's an enemy of the intelligence agencies. And he was openly talking about them being incompetent and being corrupt. And, he, you know, he fired Comey and, you know, he was against the FBI. And, you know, look, it's a very dangerous thing. You talk to people that are intelligence agencies. Like, it's a very dangerous thing for a president to be at war with the intelligence agencies and to do it so publicly. And I think... It's with without a doubt when you have a gigantic massive protest that a lot of people think is a threat to democracy You have these people that are saying the election was rigged and they're on the Capitol lawn. They're screaming and yelling I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that they would encourage people to do things that were unlawful instead of peacefully protesting Which is what everybody was doing on the outside, which is totally legal to take that and escalate it to entering into the Capitol. Now you can lock things down, and now you have real clear evidence that this president is responsible for this insurrection attempt, and this is dangerous, this is a threat to our democracy, and he's never going to be president again, we're going to indict him, we're going to go after him, we're going to do all these different things. Mm -hmm. I think it's not, it's not like it's, there's a lot of shenanigans going on on both sides. It's not like a clear cut, like he shouldn't have done that and they should have done this. It's like there's a lot of and there's a lot that's been going on throughout history. Whenever people have unchecked power and unchecked influence and they, have, and they have enemies and Trump was their enemy. 